While gender is not synonymous with women, when it comes to gender inequality, it's women who are the losers. And not just in the developing world. While many advances have been made in the past few decades, there's no country in the world that has been able to eliminate the gender gap. Stopping violence against women and striving for gender equality in all areas will require challenging how gender roles and power relations are versed in society and may even take generations. Why has it been so difficult to achieve gender equality? Or what are some of the reasons? I think it's a good question to open on. I think in many ways that's the million dollar question, that the complexity behind gender equality is just huge. I think power and self-interest plays into it. I think a history of inequality continues to perpetuate people's inability to see a world that looks different from the present and I think also that our response to gender equality hasn't been consistent enough over time so there's some of the reasons. I did some analysis in 2005 looking at the um, all the domestic violence laws that have been passed in the East Asia and Pacific region and there wasn't one that hadn't come into being because of a huge um, movement of women in civil society that had lobbied really hard over many years to bring that change about. And that's the kind of um, movement, I think, that we need to look at. How can we support that more to bring about more changes to improve the lives of women? Last time I, I went to DRC for my visit to one of our program, I met this woman called Fura. And uh, this lady was, uh, she's a victim of uh, violence. And uh, if for those of you who don't know anything about the DRC, the DRC been in a conflict for more than uh, 20 years. But uh, uh, going back to my story, I met Fura, and Fura was a victim of rape, sexual terror. She was raped by five combatants. They come to a house, they tie the husband, they took, her, they took the husband away. Before taking the husband away, they raped uh, the daughters in front of him. They raped the woman in front of him and they forced his son, his first son, to rape one of the daughters. So because of that, rape is a taboo in the DRC. So they remain with, she was Basia Ofura, with four children, no properties, no money, and she has to leave because she can't go back to her own family. There is stigma attached to that. So this poor woman, Fura, was left alone in the world. The shame of being a woman, she told me. It became now a way of controlling and uh, over resources, over land, people come to you and destabilize your family so they have power because they know they can get, the men have exactly. to leave. Exactly. The men have to leave and uh, they have control over land and they have control over resources. So it's also about, it's also linked to the mineral resources because people want to exploit that. And uh, for them to do that, they have to own the land, they have to control. It's all about power, resources. Mm. It's a curse for the DRC. One of the most worrying things I think I've seen in, um, in recent years was the graphs from, it was actually the World Bank did some qualitative work leading into the World Development Report that um, Australia had funded for them. And the graphs from Papua New Guinea showed, what they showed was they'd done focus groups with old women and young women, older men and younger men and ask them a whole range of different questions about their aspirations and how things had changed and how they saw the world and things. Um, and the difference between the older women and the younger women was enormous. The younger women's aspirations were, you know, for so much more, you know, their, their world had changed. But the difference between the older men and the younger men hadn't changed. They were the same. And I thought that was one of the most worrying things I'd seen. Because if you don't have young men changing their aspirations and their views of the world as well, then sooner or later we're going to have a clash. We had this meeting and there was only women. And people say, oh, my husband says it's a woman issue. We cannot discuss that. No. Men should be part of that because they're also going through a lot of trauma, shame and stuff. They cannot just say that. And to have a good response to this, we have to involve men and women.
and they have to work together to address this problem. Please join me in thanking our um, panellists, Julie McKay, Lulu Mitschabu and Gillian Brown. And I hope you can join us in a month's time for the next Praxis. And if you'd like to subscribe to the podcast or look at previous episodes, uh, please go online to the World Bank or worldbank.org forward slash Praxis. Thank you. Goodbye.